Oh, fucking A. Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today I got a pretty good project for you. This is going to be a combination metal and wood vanity. We're going to be using inch and a quarter square tube 063 for the metal frame, and I got a beautiful piece of walnut for the countertop, the drawer, and the mirror frame. Let's get started. Okay, so here's a little sketch of what we're going to be doing. Uh, basically, it's an inch and a quarter square tube 063 metal frame right here. And then uh, we're going to put the walnut top on it with a walnut drawer. And I'm going to be building a walnut frame around here for the mirror and put, putting some vanity lights on each side. The one change that I'm going to make uh, that this drawing has right here is I'm going to be moving these bottom rails right here up about four inches. Um, I just want to be able to have uh, four connecting points that will be more balanced on the on a floor that it's going to be on rather than have these right on the floor. It has a tendency to maybe rock a little bit. That's the only change we're going to do. Let's get started. All right, so here's that piece of wall that I was talking about. You know, sometimes it's, it's best if you have a hardwood supply store like I do that's relatively close to pick out the wood and spend some time picking it out. You know, I, I spent a, probably a good hour going through the pile and finding uh, this piece that was what I thought was a really nice pattern to the inside and then the corresponding pieces go, go with it that I'm matching the color and grain. Yeah, it's really worth it. And so here I am, I'm just cutting, I measured everything up and I'm cutting off all the bad pieces and uh, getting ready to to trim them up. You know, from the uh, hardwood supply store, at least, at least the one that's by my house, uh, they give you one edge that's uh, that's nice and square, and they give you another edge that's not. It's just really rough. And so I'm going right here, and I'm breaking out my table saw table. I'm setting it up. You know, I don't do that very often, but uh, I had quite a bit of wood to cut right here, and, and uh, it makes it worth my while to set up my table saw table to make these cuts. And you can see that I'm cutting off the, uh, the bad ends right here and getting everything square so I have something to work with. Okay, so we got the three pieces cut for the uh, for the top, and uh, you can see that they're different sizes, and there's a reason for that. Um, I wanted the center of this beautiful piece of walnut to be right in the center of the countertop, and this piece right here is a little bit bigger because I got the vanity, or I should say, the mirror that is going to go on the back side here. So I'm just trying to balance between that and this front edge to be sure that this is in the center. So I had a lot of cutting to do, so I wanted to take full advantage of my table saw table while I had it up and get everything cut I, that I needed to get cut, including the vanity uh, mirror section as well as uh, the drawers here. Once I got that all done, it was time to, to, to glue the three pieces together for the vanity top. And one thing I've learned is, uh, you know, I'm not a woodworker by any means, but one thing I've learned is, is when gluing something together, uh, be sure you get full coverage on both pieces, that there is nothing that didn't get covered with glue. Uh, and when you clamp everything together, you get a real true bond this way. Now this, uh, this piece is only about uh, 20 inches, 22 inches wide, and about 42 inches long. So... Uh, it's relatively small, so I've got three, uh, five clamps I'm using, uh, two clamps on the bottom side, three clamps on the top side, and all the while, uh, as I'm uh, clamping it down, I'm be sure that everything uh, is nice and flat, and there, there's no cupping going on. So I set that aside, let it dry for a while, and it's time to get started on the frame itself. Like I said, inch and a quarter, 063 is the thickness that I decided to go with. Uh, it just seemed like that was the right size for the project we're using. The um, you know inch and a half looked too big, inch was too small. This seemed to be just right. This is a piece of uh, one inch by three sixteenths flat bar stock. Now this is what I decided to use on the very top section of the metal frame. Uh, this is what I thought would make for a good separation between the the wood part of the vanity and the metal frame. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit, a little bit later on. So I'm just getting everything all cut out. And you can see it's kind of crazy uh, putting this flat bar stock in there and, and cutting it flat like this. It could sometimes, not a lot for the, uh, for the saw to clamp to right here. So I took everything nice and slow and 
and I, I didn't want any issues. So it's time to fire up the HTP 2400 and uh, get the settings adjusted right for what we needed and get uh, to tacking this thing together. So here I am, and I'm taking my time doing this because my tabletop, as you guys have said before, is not perfectly flat, and sometimes it poses a problem on layout such as, uh, such as this right here. Everything needs to be perfectly flat, so i got to deal with uh, ups and downs on this thing, and so I, I take my time to get everything nice and, uh, nice and flat. 49 and a quarter. No, it's not square. Forty-nine and a sixteenth under a half. Forty-nine and a sixteenth over a half. Oh, okay. Forty-nine and a half. Uh-oh. What the f is going on, man? This is not happening. What? What is happening? So once I got everything all squared away, having fun with the square, it was time to go ahead and finish up making the other the other section, tacking everything together, and getting everything uh, ready to weld out. Oh, that's the beauty of it right there. Perfect. Okay. All right. Next. You know, I always captioned uh, the best shot I can. I thought this was interesting. I had smoke coming out of the end of this. You know, all the things you got to do to help the fabrication. You see, I got things shored up with a piece of 2 by 4 right there. And I'm able to tack the, uh, uh, the second section here together. Trying to get everything just right. And this is what I was talking about right here. This is the 1 inch by 3 16 flat bar stock that um, I chose to put on the very top to, to give it the, the separation between the wood vanity and the metal frame itself. I thought this was just a little added touch. You can see everything had to be absolutely perfect because the, the, the wood vanity that I'm making for this has got to fit perfectly on that. And so once everything was all on there, I went ahead and was able to double check for square. Everything is nice and, and, and right. And uh, it's time to weld everything all out. And that's what I'm doing right here, just getting everything completely done. You know, the 2400 is relatively a new piece of equipment here to the shop. And, and one of the things I really enjoyed about this, this is the 15 foot long gun lead that it has. I'm able to have the machine in one spot and pretty much walk all the way around my table and you know do the welding without having to drag the machine along with me so that's working out really good so now i got everything all welded out we're going to set this thing aside for now and it's time to get started on the wood portion of the project all right so the glue is all dried and i've taken the clamps off and now i'm just cutting it to size and you might see this uh, this tape this painter's tape that i've put on there and I did that to keep from scratching the surface uh, when I'm running the saw across to, to cut, uh, cut it to size. And after I got it all done, it was time to start sanding everything nice and flat and smooth. And I went through the grits right here, you know, starting at about 120 and uh, working my way all the way up. Believe it or not, I didn't need to, but I, uh, all the way up to like 1500 just to see what it, would, what it would be like and how smooth I could actually get it. But I got it all done. It turned out pretty good. And it's on to uh, getting the frame uh, part made right here. And I'm over the compound miter saw, cutting everything uh, to length, cutting everything to a 45 that I need to. And now assembling this thing, I'm going to rely solely on glue right here. I, I didn't want to have any nails uh, exposed on the outside. I, I just wanted that clean look. So um, I just glued everything together and then clamped it and then checked it for square and you know glue is pretty this this glue is pretty strong and i've never had a failure yet with that 
once everything was nice and square clamped it together let that dry and then I'm it's now time to start getting the drawer section ready to go here now you know I build it like I said I build as I go most of the time I don't do this all the time so I am just getting this drawer section in and I know it has to be perfectly square and I spent a lot of time getting this thing just right and then trying to figure out the best way to keep it nice and rigid that's why I came up with these little 45 blocks uh, now I did glue and nail those from the inside to keep it nice and square keep everything nice together nice and tight and that worked out pretty good and I'm jumping around here a little bit while that's drying. I'm back over two, two or three coats of polyurethane clear satin on the metal frame. And, uh, you know, that is the way I'm going to leave it finished. I like that metal look. This is what uh, this is what I want it to look like. So I'm just protecting it so it wouldn't be uh, rusting down the road. So while that's drying, back over to the, uh, uh, the drawer sections now. I'm cutting them to size. And I thought I was done with my table saw uh, at this time. Uh, I thought I had everything cut out, but uh, I brought it back out, set it up on my welding table, and right here I'm cutting. I'm not certain what this call might be the a dado or rabbit for the inside bottom of the drawer. I got some quarter inch plywood that's going to be uh, going inside of there, and that's what uh, I got done right there. And back over to the metal frame for the final touches here uh, put these little plastic plugs in the very bottom uh, these things are pretty cool they they, they work real well and uh, you know it worked out pretty good and I'm just getting ready to attach the uh, the vanity top to this thing this is the best way I thought that it, uh, it would go together is by uh, screwing through here and uh, you know I'm just using typical like drywall screws I want to say and that's just because that's what I had I'm not saying that's the right thing to use so that's why I got the little countersink going on right here I wanted those screws to be flush to the bottom of the metal now, now it's time to uh, get the top on you can see it fit perfectly on there just the way I was hoping and I was wanting to I didn't want this wood to split when I'm this far along with the game so that's why I pre-drilled everything with a small drill and then drove those screws in there it worked out really good time to start cutting out for the drawer front and boy i didn't want to make any mistakes right here you know i took my time because this piece that i'm actually cutting out is going to end up being the drawer front itself and so i've got this little pull saw right here now it's not a fancy one by any means it's not a japanese pull saw i got this thing at the home depot i don't use it very often but but when you need it, you know, you need it. And uh, for this situation right here, it worked out perfectly. I ran a nice perfect straight cut right down to the bottom metal of the frame, or the bottom of the bottom of the metal frame right there. And, uh, you know, it provided a nice straight cut. And that ultimately was going to be the drawer front. So I'm assembling the uh, the drawer itself right here. Now, a lot of guys uh, don't glue this uh drawer base in they, they let it free float for expansion and contraction i would imagine but eh, it's just, just a small little drawer and i wanted everything glued up nice and tight that's just kind of the way i do things i don't think it's going to be a problem and just put some brads in the end right there and that part of it is done and you know time to get these uh drawer glides on right here and I always seem to have a problem with these things you know there's there's all kinds of different ways I've seen several different ways people put them on but uh, um, this is the way I did it here I just use an equal uh, that board is about a half inch that spacer on the bottom and then um, I corresponded the the uh, glides on the side of the drawer itself right here to fit so it perfectly fits right in worked out pretty good for me may not be the way to go but worked out pretty good and there it is, all complete, ready for the top itself. Oh, fucking A. Fucking Jim. Man. I don't know, man. I, I just, I'm just fucking shit, man. You know, just when you think everything is going along nice and smooth, uh, went to flip over the vanity to put it on the uh, top of the countertop and the drawer came flying out and did a little bit of damage to it as you can tell I got a little frustrated but uh, I managed to get over it and we got that all fixed up now it's time to attach the uh, the countertop to the vanity itself and 
Now this is the beauty of having a uh, plasma table right here. You can see I made these little brackets right here and they've got a little burn mark in the center to help bend them at a 90 degrees. Uh, yeah, it worked out really good. I had about eight of these things to make. And uh, this is what I used to attach the, the top to the base itself. Uh, just a few screws, uh, eight of these clamps, um, yeah, all the way around the outside. And that did the job and there it is. Uh, we're moving along looking pretty good and everything is nice and square right to the metal part of the frame and now it's time to get that vanity built and again I thought I was done with my table saw but no nope, one more time up on top of the uh, welding table and I'm cutting out what I think is called a rabbit I think this is what's going to accept the mirror glass and the backboard itself and now uh, once I got that done I just cut the the 45 frame out and started assembling again now <clears throat> again I, I i have one one nail on the outside of this thing and i glued everything else together and i just did that uh just to hold it together i didn't think you're going to be able to see it i double checked the the mirror it fits in and then i clamped everything in nice and square and um got that done that worked out really good all right, so this is the actual lighting assembly for the vanity on each side. I guess it was just a light assembly that I picked up at the Home Depot, and I took it apart, and I'm just tracing it out onto this uh, scrap piece of wood, and that's what I'm actually uh, going to use as a template uh, to drill into the vanity. I, I uh, you know, definitely don't want to be making any mistakes at this point. And uh, I'm trying to get everything as perfect as I could. And I thought by making this template, uh, this is going to be able to help. And you can see it fit perfectly there. So with that said, I'll be able to uh, drill it out. Now, when I put the light assembly in, I didn't really have a plan at all of what, how I'm going to hide the lights uh, on the backside. So uh, I had some leftover walnut. And so I had this idea I was going to slice some things up and... Uh, um, and make a, some sort of like a little box around it. And that was a, that was a pretty good idea. That, uh, that's going to work out pretty good. Once that everything was done there, sanded everything again and went through all the grits and got everything nice and fine. And uh, it actually looked pretty good and worked pretty good. I'm pretty pleased the way that turned out right there. And then here you can see this is the template and this is uh, how I drilled those holes through the walnut and everything lined up. I took my time uh, and luckily... Uh, I, may, I managed to get all eight holes, four on each side, uh, drilled out without any tear out, uh, which I'm glad about because I certainly wouldn't want to have to redo this frame. So um, got them all done, and they looked pretty good once I took that off. I was pleased, nice and flat. And like I did everything, I did uh, three coats of this polyurethane clear satin finish on, on the, the vanity top and drawer section and the mirror here. And then that's how that finished out. And then this is the little box that I'm going to build that's going to enclose the light fixture itself. You know, you can never have enough clamps. You know, these, these clamps right here are pretty good. I also have these little metal clamps. You know, every once in a while they go on sale at the Home Depot for about a buck a piece, 99 cents. And every time they do, I grab a handful of them. can never have enough clamps, as you can see. That worked out pretty good right there. Again, just relying on glue glued everything together and uh, once that uh, was done i'm taking now apart and these this is the this is the light that we're going to use i'm not going to use that metal frame for any reason so that's just going to go away and uh, this is the light assembly that's going to happen and again i'm jumping around uh, thinking about all kinds of different things this is the the way that i'm going to attach the vanity to the to the vanity top and it, by a piece of uh, five inch by eighth inch thick flat um, metal plate and you can see I got a series of holes I'm going to be splitting that plate so uh, the two screws are going to go into the vanity top the mirror part and the other two screws will be going into the bottom half of the vanity itself and I don't think there's going to be any issues there at all it's going to be plenty strong Got that done, and then it was this glue was drying. It's time to sand everything down, and that's what I did with this little thing. And you know, if I would have thought things through a little bit more, I would have probably made an enclosure like this all the way around the whole back side of the mirror. But um, you know, I didn't, and so what I did worked out pretty good. Uh, you know, it's just you live and you learn. And again, three coats of the polyurethane to match everything else that I did. 
And this is the way I assembled these, these lights. Um, stuck them through there, wired everything up. And I'm using some some small connectors, the smallest ones I could I could find, uh, with some shrink wrap on there. I you know obviously I didn't want to have any wire nuts, and I wanted I needed everything kind of streamlined to fit inside this enclosure that I made right here. And once I uh, I knew everything was going to fit, uh, I just glued everything right in. I hope there's not going to be any issues with those sockets down the road. You know I thought about trying to to figure out a way to hold the glass in, and it kept coming to me. Uh, I've seen some mirrors before and they've got these little plastic things that fit behind the mirror and uh, that's what I just thought I would do. This is obviously not plastic, it's metal, but uh, um, I just happened to have the scrap piece of half inch by eighth inch thick flat bar stock and I made these little tiny um, little brackets and uh, this is what I'm going to use to hold the mirror and the backboard in place. I've got like eight of them I think. Yeah, I try to squeeze as many in the vice as I could at the same time, but uh, I can only get three at a time in there without having it being a problem. And then here it is. I am screwing these uh, these lights into place with some screws, and that's what's going to hold the sockets in. And then disaster struck. Yeah, um, I had the glass sitting in the frame, and uh, I, I got sidetracked. My phone rang, and when I came back, and went to flip the frame over, forgot the glass was in it, and it crashed and broke. Well, generally, it's not a problem. Went down to the Home Depot, but, of course, this piece of glass was discontinued. It took me three Home Depots to find one piece of matching glass, and I'm glad I did because this is it. If I would have had a problem with this, uh, I guess the next option would have been to a glass guy and have a piece of glass cut to this exact same size of the frame. But I was pretty careful with this one. I didn't want any trouble, so I took my time. And everything uh, worked out pretty good. The glass went in, the backer board on the back, and there's my little fasteners right there. Just uh, pre-drilled them and just put these uh, all the way around, and that, that held everything in nice and secure. You know, a couple on each side and a couple uh, on the ends uh, was all it took. And uh, pretty clean, and the whole time I was very worried about drilling all the way through. Can you imagine taking the drill, pre-drilling that, and, and actually running the drill through the other side of the frame? What a disaster that would have been at this point in time. But, hey, I was careful, and it worked out pretty good. This is the uh, final wiring stages here where I'm actually you know, wiring up uh, with these connectors that I had to put the uh, actual cord on that's going to be plugging into the wall. Yeah, some of you electricians out there... You know, I like the tape deal, but uh, that's just some added protection. Once I got that clamped on, I uh, was able to take these pieces of metal that I had and shove them in there because when I screwed this plate on, all I could think about was running the screws through the wire on the inside of this thing, and I didn't want to do that. So that those uh, pieces of plate that I ran through there uh, prevented from any of that happening. All right, so there it is. The vanity is pretty much on. Again, just temporarily going to put a couple of screws in the back side here. This idea worked out pretty good, pretty clean, nice and flush. Be able to put it right up against the wall. Then all I needed to do is put a handle on here, and I just picked one up at the Home Depot. This is just a contemporary type of uh, handle. I think that matches uh, what we have going on right here. And... Uh, that was the end of the project right there. Uh, I'm really pleased the way this turned out. It was a good experience for me, a good learning experience. You know, no, no project's ever the same. It's always something different with me. And uh, I got to tell you, the client was very happy, uh, very pleased with this piece of furniture. What a beautiful piece of walnut right there for the top itself. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you get a chance, check out the, my website at jimbosgarage.com for your latest swag, shirts, and hats, and miscellaneous things. Thanks for watching again. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.